So for this first part of my today workshop, I will talk about multi-cluster. I will try to be fast. So I, I want to open the room for everyone. And I'm more interested in the panel than actually speaking here by myself. So multi-cluster. Uh, like versus what Alberto was presenting, that is the traditional HPC. I'm here to talk about like what's uh, new and what's on the edge and what we are doing uh, uh, on the Kubernetes community to bring multi-cluster uh, to reality. And the motivation is uh, in the cloud ecosystem, everyone is turning into multi-cluster, right? So uh, some are doing it for the multi-tenancy, so instead of uh, dealing with multi-tenancy in one Kubernetes cluster, they create one Kubernetes cluster per workload or per user or per team, right? Like there are multiple use cases. And as you can see here, multiple projects ha are being created on a daily basis, as always in open source, to address the uh, multi-cluster uh, ecosystem, right? And the one that we care a lot from the HPC community is Q. Q recently also presented a tool to do multi-cluster aware bash scheduling in Kubernetes, and it's called basically multi-Q, right? So in the Kubernetes community, everyone is turning into multi-cluster. But managing 10, 20, hundreds of Kubernetes clusters is not an easy task, right? Uh, keeping everything native, keeping everything with Kubernetes APIs, and being aware of, of the CPU utilization on each cluster and like the healthy, like how healthy each cluster is and which clusters have the dependencies that I require to launch my workload is not that easy. So uh, every cluster now uh, has a solution for that, but we want a community back API, right? So I am working on that. And uh, I'm here to present something that is still under work. So uh, whenever you see EEP <coughs> in the Kubernetes ecosystem, it basically means that it's, it is an open PR against the Kubernetes core project to open a new feature. Right? So this is kind of like feature request for Kubernetes. Right? So we have the feature request for Kubernetes uh, 4322 that is basically opening the door for a cl Yeah, no, no, don't continue. Um, I just need to restart the Zoom. Because I, I reached the limit <coughs> that was set by the administrator. Okay. Reporting in progress. So I can continue talking. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we are proposing a cluster inventory API that will appear back in screen in a minute. And basically, this API will be a native a Kubernetes API that will allow us to track all the clusters as a pool, right? So the idea is to be able to have pool of clusters namespaced in my uh, management Kubernetes cluster. So what most are doing, and, and like Red Hat is one of the ones doing it very good with OpenShift, and they have this HyperShift project, is that you can have one Kubernetes cluster that has the logic and the functionality to uh, spin up other Kubernetes clusters to, to then uh, launch workloads into them. So you basically don't launch workloads into your management Kubernetes cluster, but you spin up a Kubernetes cluster to do something and then on, on this Kubernetes cluster that you spin up, you run your workloads, you deploy your services, and then you queue that Kubernetes cluster. So to keep the information of all the Kubernetes clusters that you are creating on the fly, we are proposing this API that already passed the first review. So it's considered now alpha. And we are pushing and we need community uh, feedback to get it into beta so then it can be used uh, by everyone, right? So when it is in alpha, basically it's just up there for discussion, but it's not into the code itself, right? So uh, as you can see here, we are proposing a very lightweight API. It's not going to be like a big manifest. It's basically going to hold the version of your Kubernetes cluster because uh, sometimes you have different versions of Kubernetes in your clusters for dependency reasons. And we will have, as I was saying, like the conditions. Is the control plane healthy uh, when this cluster join in my pool? And then in properties, we will store things like uh, how many CPUs, GPUs, memory, the dependencies that that cluster holds. Uh, because, uh, for example, for HPC, if your cluster doesn't have the MPI operator installed and you try to launch an MPI job, it's not going to run, right? So you can host the dependencies there. And 
Another thing that we are doing as a community is a second API that is a, no, uh, a closer level API that is called the Node Feature Group. So instead of uh, talking about multiple clusters, this API is going to allow us to create node pools, right? Because sometimes uh, what ends up happening is that we have a heterogeneous clusters that is also kind of like a new trend where I have a cluster where I have nodes fr uh, that have GPUs, nodes that don't have GPUs, nodes that have access to network, uh, fast networking, nodes that have access to storage, and, and it becomes like a, a mess to know uh, which nodes are which, right? So with this no feature group API, we can create mm, uh, node pools by defining rules. And these rules can even be like software level rules, not even hardware level. So I can say, I wanna have a node pool of all my nodes that are, uh, that have a kernel four point something, and I also wanna have a node pool of all my uh, nodes that have a kernel five point something, right? So this will uh, aggregate the nodes depending on the rules, like this rule system is very broad from hardware to software. So you can just create node pools as desired. And then the good thing is that we are working as a community to match the two APIs, right? So the idea is that each cluster is going to have uh, node pools via the node feature group API. And then this API is going to be reporting back to the cluster inventory API. So and then in your management cluster, you can have like a very big vision of each cluster and, and the node pools that it has. So you can, you can have tens of thousands of clusters, which is already happening uh, at the management level, let's say like Google and Amazon, where they have these managed Kubernetes uh, systems. So you can have tens of thousands of clusters, but on each one, you can say like, oh, this, this cluster has this many GPU nodes and this many CPU nodes. And, and then you're, you can have a meta scheduler that, uh, performs a smart decisions when routing the workloads. And we are proposing two models. Uh, one is what, what we call the push model, and is that the cluster inventory requests the node pools to the clusters, and the, then is the responsibility to each cluster to achieve what the cluster, the management cluster is requesting. So basically, each individual cluster will try to match what is being requested to have. So if I'm being requested to have a specific node pools, I will work towards getting those node pools. And the pool model is that each cluster is independent and it will just report back what they have, right? So this is what we are proposing. And uh, with that, I leave for the next one. That awesome. way I open space for others. Thanks.